Here's what's frustrating. Something has to work, okay? I can accept the fact that maybe the Twins aren't going to want to sign guys to long-term deals. If you look at the history of seven-year deals, whatever, pick your number. Most of them do not turn out very well for the team signing those deals. So there's some logic behind that, okay? Uh, if you want to draft and develop and focus on younger players, great. That can work too. Teams have been successful with that, okay? But you, <laughs> you have to do it right, okay? You have to do it right. So that's where the frustration comes in. Okay, if we if we strip away all the names, all of the you know sentimental feelings that we have for the twins players that come and go, uh, um, who we get to know over the years, you know, obviously referring to Jose Brios in this situation, but we might be having the same kind of conversation with Byron Buxton soon. It, it's not that it's unforgivable to let them go or trade them away or not want to pay them a seven year deal. You can, you can do that and, and build a successful franchise, but they're not doing all the other things right now that you have to be doing to have those things work out. So that is where, you know, if, if you're kind of looking from the outside in or if you're someone who doesn't get how Twins fans are frustrated about Jose Brios, even though they, the trade at the time that it happened, I didn't think that it was a bad trade. You know, they got a couple very nice pieces. I think you can, there's no problem in saying that and being frustrated today seeing that Jose Brio signed a seven-year contract extension with the Blue Jays. You can do both. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. And continuing on that conversation of things have to work, man, Austin Martin and Simeon Woods Richardson have to be something now. Um, you know, you traded Jose Brios with only a year and a half of team control. You can't really factor this into his value at the time of the trade. This is a separate thing. But man, that, like I said, you whatever you're doing has to work. You don't have to assign all your guys to extension, but whatever you're doing instead has to work. Whatever you're doing, what, Simeon Woods Richardson and Austin Martin have to work. Whatever is going to happen with Byron Buxton, if he doesn't sign, is going to have to work. And the, the Twins, just the reason why they're a last place team is because things have not worked. You know, their uh, patchwork off seasons have been hit or miss. It's incredibly difficult to do. It is not easy to head into every off season and rebuild as much of your team on one-year deals as they've tried to do. It's very difficult. Um, in order to get around that, you have to be building up through your system, and unfortunately, that hasn't worked yet under this front office. I've, you know, in case you're not a, a regular watcher, I've kind of lost faith in this front office, but this coming season, they have a lot of their prospects are in the AA, AAA level, could be emerging. So I'm willing to sort of see what happens with that group of players, which includes... Martin and Woods Richardson, um, but those those have to work. <laughs> you know the way they're the way they're operating, and we've seen the Twins be successful with this sort of operational model before. But it is not easy. So let's circle back to the actual news of Jose Brios signed a seven-year, hundred and thirty-one million dollar contract extension with the Toronto Blue Jays that works out to an eighteen point seven average annual value. I think that he did pretty well for himself. And, you know, we were told all along that Jose was wanting to get into free agency, you know, and basically you were going to have to maybe kind of overpay him a little bit to, and that makes sense. Why not? Every player should have that stance. Uh, you're going to have to kind of pay a premium to keep him from going into free agency. So um, I think the Blue Jays kind of made that happen with this deal. Uh, this isn't, it's not a, gr a huge overpay. I'm not trying to suggest that, but 18.7 AAV to kind of put that into some context. Um, Zach Wheeler, who was, I want to throw him out because he's specifically, he was a guy that the twins reportedly had targeted. Uh, we're not sure exactly what they offered him, but he ended up signing a five-year, $118 million deal. That works out to a $23.6 million average annual value. I think he's quite a bit, you know, that's obviously you know, $5 million more a year, but I think he's quite a bit better than Jose Barrios. I do think that this was a, a nice deal for Jose Barrios. I'm happy for him. Uh, but if we look at, you know, just looking back to the most recent signing of this offseason that we talked about yesterday, Eduardo Rodriguez, a five-year, $77 million contract. That's a 15.4 average annual value. Some people wouldn't agree with me, but I think if you look at a lot of the advanced metrics, Barrios and Rodriguez are fairly similar 
They're fairly similar in age. So that's where I'm saying that this is a pretty good deal for Brios. If I'm Jose, basically, if I'm Jose Brios and I see that Eduardo Rodriguez gets a five-year, seventy-seven million dollar guarantee, I'm looking at that seven-year, one thirty-one, and I'm saying, okay, yep, I don't need to go to free agency. I think this is this is I'm taking the money here. But again, going back to like you, you have to be doing something and it has to work. Okay, <laughs> and I don't want to get too fixated. It gets it gets problematic when you get too fixated on names. But I do want to throw out that the other news of the morning so far, Noah Syndergaard is signing a one-year, $21 million deal with the Angels, okay? So if you want to say that you don't want to sign Jose Brios to a seven-year deal, again, look back at the history of those kinds of deals. They usually don't work out well in the end. I can get it. I can understand. I'm not saying that I wouldn't have signed that contract. I would have signed that contract if I was the Twins front office. But I, if they're just saying, hey, we don't want to go that long on anybody, let alone uh, Jose Barrios, I get it. I get it. But then, okay, you have to be willing to go and get a guy like Noah Syndergaard. And again, I'm not saying that this necessarily was something that was going to make sense or that he would want to come here. But I can't, there, you, <laughs> you can't, <laughs> there has to be logic in spending somewhere, okay? You have to do something. Do something, Okay. <laughs> And maybe Syndergaard was hell-bent on going and playing for the Angels. Maybe he loves that area, and, you know, it's a dream to play with Trout and Otani and all those guys. Who knows? Maybe, you know, maybe that, that was a destination that was particularly attractive to him, and he had no interest at all in coming to Minnesota. Whether you offered him $26 million, maybe he would have said, nope, I want to take 21 and go here. Um, that's entirely possible. I no, There's no way for me to know that. And again, I don't want to fixate on that player or that situation. All My point there is you have to be doing something. And if you're not doing those two things, you better be developing. You know, <laughs> I think it's really nice that Bailey Obert and Joe Ryan are sort of penciled into this rotation. You know, there's certainly no guarantees. You know, so it wouldn't be the weirdest thing to have some guys have nice debuts and then kind of fall off a bit. But that's two dudes, and, and you know, you're going to need, it's not just, you know, you have a five-man rotation, sure, but you're going to need seven, eight, nine starting pitchers to get through the season. So, I mean, it, it's hard. It's hard not to get frustrated. I, I'm I, Logically, I'm telling you to try to be patient, and, you know, it would be kind of odd to expect this Twins team to be active at this point of the offseason, or that, you know, logically this Jose Brios extension doesn't really have anything to do with the Twins or the trade that they made. But it's, I I've, I obviously can't <laughs> do, take my own logic in this. It's frustrating. You know, and I'm recording this, you know, about an hour, half hour after uh, the news breaks. So I won't be able to edit and get this out until later. But I kind of wanted to capture that and, ca you know, and not have time to let this settle and think about it more because... Um, sometimes, you know, being a fan, logic isn't what it's all about. <laughs> you know, and I feel like I try, I try to, I try to bring a lot of, you know, information and a lot of, you know, put a lot of thought into uh, the analysis that I'm doing on here, but I make no, you know, I don't try to hide the fact that I'm also a Twins fan and sometimes those things are difficult. And today... I definitely am feeling that today. It's difficult for me to look at this Jose Brios extension um, and not get frustrated by it. You know, how are you feeling? Let me know. Thanks for checking this out. This has been Tom. Again, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, and please consider subscribing for more Twins Talk here on YouTube.